first of all, I will just say a few words about the uh, Celia biography. Um, Celia Hampton was born in 1981 in Stroud, UK. She graduated uh, from the Royal College of Art with an MA, a Master Degree in Painting, in 2007 and completed her Bachelor in Fine Arts in Glasgow School of Arts. She represented by South Reef Gallery in London where she had a solo exhibition in 2013, 2011 and also 2015 and 16, right? Uh, she also had solo exhibition in different um, states, uh, in different countries all over Europe, Asia and uh, South America. Um, uh, she has been awarded by the Civitella Ranieri Foundation Fellowship based in Umbria, Italy and Sainsbury Scholarship in Painting for the British, British School at Rome. Um, once again, welcome. <laughs> um, I just, for, for the first question, I wanted just to ask you that um, your, your work of art is today one of the um, artworks in the collection of British art. Um, British Council collection and uh, how is it to be a part of this community of flourishing artists, young artists in Great Britain? Do you have um, any idea uh, of your, your position in the, uh, in the area of Great Britain in art? Um, well, I think obviously I'm happy to be one of the few artists that get some um, recognition and support and um, there are many artists these days graduating from art school and it's, it's very difficult for young artists but it's an honour to be included in the collection and um, to be also one of the women who are starting to be recognised um, but there's still a lot to do I think if you look at the pay difference, I think, is the main marker when you look at um, galleries of mine have even said, you know, if you were a, if you were a man, you'd be paid, your work would probably be worth a little bit more. Um, so I think when you look at auction differences between um, famous and established male and female artists, there is still a huge difference. So there's still a lot of work. Yes, that's, uh, we already talked about it, about this in our panel discussion the day after we opened this exhibition and we concluded that it, it's still a very big difference in the market, artistic market between male and female artists. But uh, even, that, even that we have this in mind, uh, I think uh, that in Great Britain, uh, that for example, the British uh, Council collection has a, really a lot of female artists and uh, works of female artists and that it's starting to change a little bit. Do you think that, do you see the changes in the art market and the uh, paying of uh, female artists um, uh, and male artists? Do you see the difference between before and today? Um, I don't know if I see the difference in, in the prices. I, maybe I'm not the best person to ask about that, but um, for sure, women and other minority groups are being curated into more exhibitions, and that's a great thing. Um, but I think um, there's a lot of ingrained difference that is sometimes quite subtle and sometimes quite pronounced. And it's both men and women, we all do it, I think, you know, as a woman, young woman artist, for example, um, especially one who makes work uh, which relates to bodies, it's quite often that I, the way I look will be connected in some way to my work and it's quite hard for people sometimes to separate my body from my work which I think is something that women and young women especially um, probably, um, that probably relates specifically to us um, and that's something I think both men and women do um, so I think there's a lot of in the era of various new media of art, we can see in the exhibition that we have different medias. Uh, uh, you, you chose to, to work in this, let's say, traditional oil uh, on canvas 
do you have any specific uh, uh, idea or a concept why you chose to work in this traditional painting media and not to be uh, in some new or installation or um, different <coughs> kinds of new media that yeah. are today? I think that's a really good question and it's one that I ask myself a lot. Like why does, does this work that I'm making need to be a painting? And why is it a painting? Um, and I think that paintings need to work harder than almost any other medium in contemporary art to be relevant and to reflect contemporary life because it that if you make paintings with oil paint, I mean you can make paintings with like lots of things, but I make paintings with oil paint on a surface, and so it's already stuck in history, it's stuck in the medium. It'd be different if I made something with a, a sculpture with a mobile phone attached to it, or um, made a painting with a very industrial process, which could easily, more easily reflect the visual world as we see it. I think that um, therefore one has to work much harder within, within painting to, to have a voice that, that is uh, relevant. Um, but there are many reasons why, for example, with the chap random piece paintings, I can go through some of them, why for me painting is important. And one of them is the fact that by painting live and engaging live with these people, it allows me to uh, be performing and engaging over a period of time. So it takes a long time to actually look at somebody, um, notice their lapel or their, their profile or a certain part of their body. Um, and so my gaze and my looking is activated in that performative sense. So if I was to take a screenshot or work more digitally away from that process, um, that wouldn't be part of the work. Um, also, I think oil paint, there's something inherently quite visceral um, with oil paint that can help to describe some of these experiences that are not necessarily psychologically clean, there's something sometimes quite difficult or abject about them. And so the blobbiness and the messiness and the slipperiness of paint, for me, um, is relevant. This person's from Romania. I tried to include some countries here that were closer to okay. It's an early one. Ukraine. Okay, uh, so well, let's say that you actually became very famous because of this series of chat random. And can you explain to the audience how this uh, idea and the whole concept of this series of artworks actually um, that you created, how it came to your mind, and what's the process of making these uh, art pieces? Yeah. Uh, so to just describe these particular paintings, um, I would log on to a video chat website and then scroll through people until I found an image that I wanted or a person that I wanted to talk to and make a painting of. Um, and then we do it and then if they click next, that's the end of the painting. Or if I finish the painting, um, that there with the person. I don't work on them outside of that. I don't, once the connection is gone, that's the end of the painting. So sometimes they look a little bit messy and then sometimes they're much more uh, realistic looking because I've spent a longer time talking to them. Um, and what was the other part of the question? What was the idea behind the whole series? Oh, yeah. uh, so initially it was to do with an interest in trying to flip uh, a certain dynamic that I found with online culture where, especially in, um, in sex, I guess, online, it's very male-dominated and it was, in my experience, a lot about 
the, the, the emphasis was on the gaze of um, men. And I was initially interested in flipping that dynamic. But as time, I mean, and I think that is still part of the work, but as time, you know, I've made many of these paintings over a couple of years now, so there are other things happening because I'm speaking to people of different ethnic groups, of different ge geological social groups, um, geographical, sorry, social groups. Um, and so there is more going on than a simple male-female power dynamic. So I'm also then becoming sensitive to all sorts of different complexities that happen socially. So when we uh, exhibit this work in the exhibition, uh, the idea and the, the main idea that you mentioned about uh, uh, this turning around perspective uh, was uh, actually the part of this thematic of this room and that's why we exhibit this uh, work together with uh, uh, a sketch of our artist, Serbian artist Ivan Tabakovic, uh, who actually was looking uh, through the window and uh, looking at this uh, woman while, while she was dressing or taking her dress off. Uh, so um, we, uh, we wanted to, to compare uh, how actually this transformation went from, um, or that we wanted to change this reflection that uh, men are those ones who are uh, looking who are active and that the women are always some kind of passive um, figures, uh, objects of paintings, not actually the other way around. And I think that through this series, the chat random, uh, that we actually uh, pointed out some of our works from our collection in the context of passive and active and subject and object. And that this. Um, duality that always exists in our societies and um, uh, what can you say when you well, because you exhibit this uh, series of works in different areas in different countries in different um, uh, parts of the world uh, can you say uh, what reactions of your work as we can see that maybe this work is uh, with a man who, is, who has a clo his clothes on, but on uh, your other works we can also see very explicit nudes that you wanted to show. Uh, what was the reaction of the audience um, at, at your work? Um, I mean, I think sometimes it's difficult to know unless you have a review from somebody who's being incredibly uh, strongly opinionated one way or another, but I think generally people may be trying to be polite to your face, and it's not always easy to know what the reaction is. I would say that one memorable, re I think quite often I'm surprised at how conservative and prudish people can be, um, because for, for me, what, what I'm not interested in particularly being shocking or actually not interested, that I don't think they're particularly aggressive paintings. Um, uh, I'm just trying to reflect something that, that I see or is an, is, a, is an investigation when I'm in a form of research when I'm making the paintings. So I think sometimes when people react um, in a shocked way, it might be more of a reflection of how they feel about themselves and their own relationship with sexuality. Um, for example, I had a show in Paris of um, paintings that were another series of nude paintings which are much more, I can sh I'll show you some of them, they're much more kind of graphic in a way. Um, they are of people that I know, these ones, um, and they are made in the studio with somebody in front of me, so they're much more kind of intimate in a way. Um, and I made a series of these paintings for a show in Paris, home of Laurent Dumont, who been there for over 100 years. But a young girl who was walking past the gallery um, started banging on, she was about 12, 13 years old, banging on the window and, and saying, you're crazy, and it really upset her, I think, because 
um, I think she was at that age. But also I think if I had made a show of much more pornographic looking work, um, it might have had less of a reaction because I think with pornography, there's so much of it around that people have learned to sort of categorize it as a tool or something that you can put in its place and it's maybe has a coldness to it where I think that there's an ambiguity in some of these paintings and they're actually, they're tactile and there's an intimacy in them that some people perhaps uh, find provocative in some way. We can say that even though you maybe um, the subject is sexual, the way you work and the way you paint, it's really artistic. It's really about the elements and the colors and the line. Uh, can you explain more about uh, how you actually work with the paint? Um, well, I was, my, both my parents met on a painting course so I was brought up with a lot of art and creativity around me. My brother was a musician. My mother used to make all our clothes and things. There was a, a lot of creative activity happening. So from a young age, I was one of those kids who would draw all the time. So my relationship with painting is quite long-standing and I just really enjoy it. And I enjoy being able to paint in lots of different mediums, even on the walls or, um, but, I, but I understand that the complexities and difficulties, I think, of working within such a historical um, or fashioned in a way medium. And I think I quite embrace <coughs> some of those um, <coughs> histories. So I work within some conventions like landscape painting, portrait painting, nude in a way. Um, and I, I also grew up in the countryside and I had, a, I think, a lot of the paintings have a relationship to land, the landscape, and some of them look like landscapes, even if they're bodies. And some of the landscape paintings that <coughs> I have made maybe look like bodies. A lot of the landscapes that I um, used to paint were building sites. And these, these paintings I make online of hacked surveillance cameras, um, and that, that kind of relates to the to the chat random paintings mm -hmm. too because they're things that you can kind of flick through. Um, this is a painting that I made outside on the building site and I think it looks a bit like a body. And also, uh, you, use, you use this uh, really small scale dimension of the paintings. Why do, you, why do you want to be in this small form and does it have anything to do with uh, the process you're having with the chat random with the digital world or yeah partly it's um logistical because um i need to get as much information down as possible within a short exchange with somebody online so the smaller it is the easier it is to do that um but it's all they're also kind of screen sized paintings um but i also make very large or larger works. I just don't tend to make things in between <laughs> for some reason, which I guess would be called like picture-sized works. I think I, I like when things are either very physical or very intimate in the scale. Not the gallery scale format. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, what do you think about the, the context of your work in this exhibition? and? Uh, how do you find uh, that your work exhi is exhibited in Serbia? In, I pr you probably don't know a lot about Serbian art, but uh, having looked at this uh, this room and also the, the concept of the exhibition, because the exhibition is going from one city to another, uh, for now it's in Novi Sad and it will go then in Pristina and then in Macedonia and Skopje and Banja Luka. And what do you think about your work exhibited together with the collections that are different? Our is very traditional and we use this uh, opportunity to talk about a little bit more about some other uh, views on our collection. But also what do you think about your work exhibited together with different kinds of works from different regions? Mm. 
I mean, it's, I'm really honoured to be in this room with this collection. And uh, unfortunately, I just arrived, so I haven't had a chance to see it properly. And I think tomorrow, when I have a proper look at everything, I'll probably have a lot to say. But all I can say is, look, from a short experience of seeing it, it's, it's, it's very exciting for me. And it's an honour. So I don't, I don't know enough yet <laughs> okay. to see it. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, have you exhibited before together with uh, different collections that, that it is not just your work and your uh, works with your colleagues? Did you uh, have the chance to uh, compare your work uh, and to have this dialogue of your work together with some other artists? I um, you mean like around the world? Um, yes, or, or in, in Great Britain, does it? Yes, uh, um, I, I mean I... I'm lucky to be um, supported enough to be able to have a conversation with younger artists and to be shown with some older artists like in this kind of situation. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. I just uh, wanted to also ask if anybody of you from the audience have, have some questions for the artist? <laughs> you can also, yeah, of course, uh, say a few words more about your work that maybe we didn't mention through, the, through those questions that I asked. Okay. I'll just quickly explain to you that some of these are painted also online from a screen, but they are of uh, hacked surveillance cameras, so um, they're a moving image, but no one's there, no one is, I'm not engaging with anybody, so they're much more kind of lonely images, but they reflect, uh, apart from this guy who was a Russian um, security man who's on his phone and on Facebook and I'm watching from his I guess a camera in a hotel painting him watching so it's like voyeur on voyeur with some of these paintings um, this is also somewhere in Russia um, Taiwan and then this is a series that I make in my studio can you also explain us the titles of your work because they yeah. are specific in a way? These are all titled by the name of the person. Um, but generally, the, the paintings that I make online are titled by the person's name, their location, and the date. And I see it as a performance, in a way, a documentation of. Um, and these are some of the larger works and you can see I, I also paint on, on the walls to form a kind of stage or context for the performers, so to speak, the other painters. So basically what you're saying is that you've never been to these countries, you're communicating with these people through Spike. Through, through, through internet. Through the internet, yeah. yeah. I've done You're it. sitting at your studio, and how do you pick them? How do I pick which which person to interact with? Yeah. Um, it may because as far as I understood, you didn't know them before. These no. people are randomly uh, chosen. Yeah. Right? Well, for example, with... with Who's Raul? Raul, yeah, I mean, uh, Giovanna. How did you said, find Raul in Serbia for <laughs> 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 um, Is his stage name? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Like someone told, uh, Giovanna was saying that it's not a Serbian name, so maybe, I think a lot of people use another name. I use another name. Oh, wow. on what's this, your name? So. <laughs> um, How far do you go? I mean, it's completely random. In communication with these people. Uh, what do you mean, like? How far do you go? Do, do, do they know that they have been painting in this moment, or 
you are doing that without secretly? Um, it depends what I feel like. If I want to have a conversation with somebody, I have the time. Or I feel like I want to invest a long time with one person, then it will often become very involved and detailed. Um, this guy actually, what drew me to the image was the banality of it and the colour and it, there was something very grey about the image and the setting. He had his window blinds closed and he was sat in a very in a position on his sofa where his body language Do you share intimacy? Do you uh, do you seduce them? Uh, no, During the communication, it, uh, what kind of interest they show in communication? Is there any flirting from your side? You're flirting, yeah, that's okay. the right yeah. term. Yeah. If I want to, I mean, if I, if I, if I, occasionally, if I've been Because you're a sweet looking then, lady, you know, so. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, if it's I, easy if for them to be, uh, how should I say, uh, to, to act foolish. I mean, you know, I, if, if there was a moment where I wanted to, I would allow myself the freedom yeah. to be involved with somebody. But generally speaking, I'm working, I, I have a hoodie on. Sometimes people think I'm a man. I've been, a, I've been mistaken for a man many okay. times. Okay. Sometimes I don't have the camera on my face. I have the camera on my, my big hoodie jacket. I'm working <laughs> in the studio, you know, with my paint all over me. So, um... Sometimes it's a very, probably a very boring exchange for for the recipient. Other times they, yeah, they want to, they're trying to get me to take my clothes off. So there's a oh. there's an int there's a power game happening. <laughs> um, and you you can be focused on painting while communicating that way. I'm yeah, actually, yeah. I really like being <coughs> in these kinds of situations because it forces me to paint in a way that feels very direct and it, because there's this quite fraught situation happening I forget about art history and I forget about a kind of self-consciousness that happens when I can paint sometimes and it becomes very um, much more direct and confident and that's how I like to work. But can, you, uh, can, can they see you doing something? Because I don't know, do you have like do you, uh, on the table a small format, uh, we call that Staffelei, it's a German word, I don't know how they call it. It's a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep on. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, they can't they can't really see but sometimes I will ask, can I paint you? And they will say, Yes, I'd love to be painted and I paint them uh -huh. and I show them the painting. They really like that. Some people, yeah. A lot of people just want to be looked at. Other people want to have yeah. conversations. Next please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be shy, or I'll continue. Did it happen that uh, maybe the person that you painted uh, recognized themselves in a, in a painting show somewhere and maybe yeah, ask you for uh, their share of... <laughs> I I'm waiting for that. <laughs> Still waiting. Yeah. Where is your move? Somewhere in the audience. <laughs> so I'm... <laughs> Yeah. Do you have any uh, usual duration? Like, I don't know, is it relevant to the time that you need? Is it like in a very expressive, intensive moment for you where you kind of just uh, <coughs> express on a canvas in like 15 minutes or 10 minutes? Yeah, you're choosing half an immediately hour? or you first yeah. testing them and then choose. And the is paint. it a chat or is it with the sound? Um, well, actually, Chat Random has now changed in the last couple of months to a pay service, so I don't use it anymore. <laughs> and the, um, I mean, it's really complicated, and and so 
I've started using um, a different one called Chat Roulette, and um, that you can't chat in uh -huh. that one. It's just sound, so the experience is quite different. Sound and visual. Yeah, and, and I prefer being able to chat actually, um, because I don't know why it can it can elongate the process. Because um, I, I was trying to like imagine your situation and uh, to to like consider if it is a really hacking experience, like chatting and typing on the keyboard and then painting on the canvas. Maybe it's, there is some kind of adrenaline in, in that multitasking as well, or you separate the part where you chat and the part where you, where you paint. It's all happening at once. Okay. Um, but some people, for example, if it's a country that where we don't share a common language, it's not going to be possible to chat at all. So then maybe you use slang sign language <coughs> or, um, I mean, like hand movements or... Do they dance and move? Yeah, people move around a lot. It's like, you know, it's not um, simple who has the control, you know, they... I can't tell them what to do, they can just click next anytime they want. There's, um, it's not like paying a model to be in the studio where they're there and they stay still for you. Um, so, um, and, um, but I should be clear that it's not, I'm not being judgmental or trying to be tri trick people. <coughs> It's actually a very open experience. Mm -hmm. I want to be as open and unjudgmental as possible. Um, a lot of people that I meet are you vary in, in their situation, I think. Sometimes even I don't know if I'm being tricked, you know, like it's a, it's a, I've been chatting to someone and then I realize it's a video loop that's being played, um, but they're chatting behind it. Um, so, it's a form of research in and of itself. Yes. I don't have a, although I said I started with a particular, agen particular agenda, I think, I think it's difficult to say exactly what's happening. Um, or what it, it, maybe retrospectively it would be easier to decipher that. I really like the work of this series because uh, for me it looked so subtle as if you had really a lot of time with someone you know in a way. It looked very subtle and intimate. Yeah, this one actually was very quite intimate because as I was saying he he had a strange um, body language looked very un aggressive and very passive and very seemed kind of something strange was going on, but then I actually made two paintings of him. He was a really nice guy. We had a long conversation. Um, having said that, I've made... Yeah, you showed once where the, there was one as well of him, right? The other one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the same. No, I was wondering if it's, 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 no, it's the same guy. It's connected. And how long have you been doing this? Um, I think about since 2013, 14. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's yeah. the other one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you have a number of how many of people you met during the chat I don't actually. A lot of the paintings don't work out and then I paint over them, mm -hmm. which is why some of them become very sticky and like thick, thickly painted. Um, so I edit out a lot. A lot like a lot of paintings won't make it in the end. Um, Are they predominantly male? Um, there have been a couple of women but they've clicked off me. I once I saw a couple and I painted them, um, but it's 90% men. I have this uh, painting at home of women um, washing clothes. And uh, I, I mean, this is not a question, but a comparison. It's like you froze uh, an aspect of 21st century life because this is 
for most people it's something that they do every day and then uh, you you froze it into this medium which is painting so it's like uh, like those classical artworks that, that capture people on the field or, or somewhere only transformed into the 21st century which I think you were explaining but just realization came to me as I was <laughs> looking at this because it is something like uh, like painting people in, I don't know, going to shopping or something. Yeah. It's yeah, it's an, it, 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 people strangely don't posture in this medium for some reason. They often have like food down their top or like they just have a cigarette and they're like very relaxed. Um, all their kids are running around. Well, wow, that's obviously not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened. So you do see everything spectrum of humanity. Yeah. Um, from situations like that verge on abusive situations to because it's a because it's like not not censored really it's completely anonymous and um, what it was it's just changed um, and I think yeah I'm interested in that wi wilderness aspect of it it's like a, a wild space it's like they show more than they would uh, actually in in a yeah. real intimate uh, they show more of themselves. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and sometimes nothing's happening and it's very banal and I'm also interested in that um, everyday notes of some of the images. It's very interesting in school. <laughs> but uh, also what I uh, recognize that uh, you don't show the identity of the face. It's something that you um, probably do it uh, on purpose. Um, I mean, some of the paintings, it's just that it would take too long to make it uh, very realistic, but maybe someone could recognize themselves. I don't know. It's not deliberate. It's more just that the logistics of making a painting in a short space of time won't allow me to make it realistic in that way um, but, but yeah sometimes I mean the, the image that I'm painting from is very small and often what I like about it is that it's already disintegrating it's already a poor quality image often um, pixelated the connections back so it becomes a like painting anyway and so I think it lends itself to this way of working so sometimes the bad connection with the internet has its artistic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think it's even more monumental, even really if it doesn't look like at the first sight. But this is for me, the painter's style is really kind of realizing of Warhol's 15 minutes of glory. And this is really kind of 15 minutes of oil painting glory, you know. This is done so, so good that I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> fascinated. You know? Basically, 50 minutes of glory is the moment when it doesn't matter what it is. Raoul is everything that is, you know, left <laughs> as an identity. and. Uh, at the same time, it's it's impressive and uh, I don't know tragic maybe. Yeah. It's 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 fantastic. It's um, it's so good. I mean, I'm painting myself, and to tell the truth, these paintings are impressive. <laughs> really. Maybe you should. The get. whole idea, you know, this this passing by, let's say, yeah. kind of painter style, you know, like paces, because they are passes by, you know, just in another situation. They are, they are not street, street kind of passes by, but they are, you know, if we talk about the internet as kind of a street, you know, these are the passes by, and this is really like kind of, of um, 21st century impressionism. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't meet a lot of these people if it wasn't for 
that medium. Because I think to, 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 to have a detail would be just too much, you know, it, it doesn't fit with the idea, you know. Um, yeah. <coughs> Just wanted to ask if we, uh, if you can take a point of view um, from the social aspect, uh, what did this uh, series of works um, gave to you in a social aspect, in a way that you met a lot of different people? Do you have any, uh, let's say, critical or not critical opinion about the internet society today and the way you met those people? Yeah. I think it's probably changing really rapidly, actually. Um, the interesting thing about that particular website is that it's a cross-generational thing. So I might be chatting to a very old man who probably hasn't used the internet much, or and then I might be chatting to a younger person. I've noticed that younger people are able to switch much quicker, whereas uh, an older person would probably become very intimate very quickly, as in, I don't mean sexually intimate, I mean like vulnerable. Um, um, I would say that, and that it's easy to catch people out and off guard when you think you've got like a screen that protects you, but you can quite easily slip into something very vulnerable and intimate through conversation. Um, and it's strange how, in those kinds of situations, people, I guess, are either bored or lonely or that's their fetish and they like doing that. Um, but they have a lot of time on their hands, so they're kind of, they're there to do that, but you can still kind of catch them off guard. Um, are you the one that consciously navigates the communication? into direction of making them more vulnerable or open or sincere or feeling uh, comfortable to open up? Um, I think primarily I'm interested in making a painting. Mm -hmm. So, um, Do you declare that at the beginning? Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, it really is like a very fluid process where one painting might start off in one way and then I get involved and then meet, I feel more sociable and then it goes into a different direction. Um, or someone might say something abusive to me and then it puts me on a different feeling. So it, it really, the whole thing is like a very performative. Yes. Um, so it's quite hard to be completely in control of it. Um, and do you have a tendency to make a screenshot, to record, to somehow materialistically possess a moment? Yeah, I always, pretty much always take a screenshot <coughs> at the end, also my, in the middle, just for my records. Yeah. But in the past when I've tried to use that to continue a painting, I thought it was almost there. I just ruin, I just always ruin the painting. Okay. It doesn't work, I have to just... But you, you have like folders with the screen yeah. shots as, as a kind of archive of yeah. record. Right. Just so I know the date and exactly. the name. Do you ever go through Look through it, yeah. It's not very interesting. <laughs> 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 the paintings are probably more interesting than the image, I think. Maybe. Okay, but wh when you then go back to so-called normal situation, and then you're in a studio, and then you have people you know, and practically you're doing their portraits through portraiting their genitals, quite detailed. Yeah. You know, so it's the complete opposite. You know, their faces, their identity, their of these unknown people are almost brutally uh, blurred and then the people you know you are portraying through the detailed genitals so what's the idea? I wouldn't say that portrait How do they react um, when you say yeah I want to paint your genital you know, like, uh. um, People really like it, the women that I've oh. painted 
I see many <laughs> penises as well. <laughs> yeah. I think people, boys I think, like it too. I think people will only do it if they want to do it, so I can't force them to do it. Um, and, um, it's a very respectful process, it's not lecture, you know, I'm not trying to it's respectful and very. It's well, actually no, no, quite no, no, no. kind I'm of. I'm talking about that. Uh, I don't think you, you, you. Uh, I said I saw that as a portrait, you know, of uh, 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 you. You're choosing to to make a portrait of the people you know through the painting of their genitals. Is it the idea or or, or what is it? I, I'm not talking about yeah. shame or. or no, no. Obviously, there is no shame. You know, you know each other quite well they feel comfortable to do it, so okay, you're doing it, but what's the aspect of choosing genitals as I a... I think just because... as, as a por portraiting of someone you know. Yeah, I think, I think it, it could be anyone to be honest, it's not, it doesn't, they don't need to be, I mean, they don't always need to be somebody that I know, but it becomes intimate in that, in that moment. Um, it's more about being fascinated with really engaging and looking at what's in front of me. You don't, I don't get to look at an asshole or a vulva for like five hours at a time. I don't think anybody really does properly. So you, you, it's like a scientific almost <coughs> engagement for me to really look at and understand something. I think they're they're quite utopian in a way, the studio paintings, because they are very clean, they're very kind of intimately um, But they're also more experimental gentle. than this, because as far as I can see, even though the way you uh, choose your painting style is much more expressive here, but based on the reality, and then you have a blue pussy, I've never seen blue pussy in my life. And then uh, you have uh, penises, also orange penises, I've never seen orange penises in my life. You know, I can, I can see that you are, um, how should I say, much more experimental in, in, in a different paintry style, let's say, when you do these studio paintings, let's right. say. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And then you have a static situation. <coughs> this is interesting. Here, when you, you don't have a static situation, you're much closer to uh, the, the real picture you got. And here is the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're much more graphic, I think, than you. Yeah. That's what but coloristically also. Yeah. You know, they are much more, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, they're more invent. The color is yep. invented rather than these yeah. are much yeah. more real, real things. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a subversive artist? I mean, is, is do you criticize society in a way because you choose to portray nudity, or is it just something that came to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it is, do you want to critique with your art, or is it just art for art's sake? How do you? Do you, I mean, do you feel that your art is challenging something or you're challenging some aspect of society? I mean, I, I hope, I mean, the work comes from um, desires to challenge or like break boundaries, I guess, or rules or frustrations. But um, <coughs> I want to be as open, it probably sounds really cheesy or something, but when I make the work completely free and open when I'm actually in that moment. And then I and then my critical brain sort of comes on afterwards when I edit through things. So I would say that well maybe it's like painting and thinking at exactly the same split second. But um, I don't do this thing of like Make make a mark, then stand back and have a cigarette and just think about it. And then, you know, I try. I used to paint like that, and it, and it never really worked for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I separate the researching and the thinking, and I do all that um, at a time when I'm editing the work and like thinking about my next body of work. 
but yeah, I mean, it's, they, they are ideally um, criticisms. Or yeah, do people react? Especially, I mean, I uh, usually perceive the upper class of English society as, uh, you know, I don't know, snobbish or posh, and then. How do they, do they react to this art? I mean, have you gotten any reactions from your society? Because I think in <coughs> this art would be viewed as something uh, problematic by most people, since you're very conservative. And then I want to see how, uh, how, how people react to your art in England. Is it different? I mean, are they more open to, uh, how would you say, where did you get more negative feedback for, from your art? In, in your home country or in different countries? Or did you get any negative feedback at all? Except that girl that you mentioned, or the, the, the just shock? Or yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, it's, pr it's pretty difficult to get honest opinion from people mm -hmm. because they don't want to offend you. Or, <laughs> you know, they probably do have lots of negative opinions, but I don't know about them yet. Or I might suspect them, but... But nobody attacked you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what with the words? I, mean, <laughs> I think the biggest thing is that people want to <clears throat> want to connect the work with you as a person and make it like your DV or your like <coughs> as a woman. There must be something suspicious happening. Like uh -huh, you're yeah. trying to trick or that you're I don't know something negative um, and especially relating to um, also like I think things that would, men maybe wouldn't, wouldn't have to worry about like it's something that they do all the time but they never worry about it. yeah um, I don't I don't know so far I, I haven't in the UK it's been okay <laughs> yeah. uh, you said you made your uh, the first ones in 2013, and you probably <coughs> remembered the first one that you made. How has it sort of progressed or affected you as an artist and as a person also, having these experiences, and then how do, do paintings change over time? Mm. I think I've probably come to an end, towards the end of the series now, actually. Um, and I think it's documented a particular time um, of engagement, online engagement. Um, but I, it's pretty, it's really tiring and exhausting and draining to make this work. And so I don't really want to do it. Um, and I feel like I've kind of. Um, I've begun to, I've sort of understood it enough now. Um, I think to begin with, I found it kind of traumatic but exciting. <coughs> and then now, as time's gone on, I've just um, become more interested in um, the formal aspects of the, of the painting, I think. Um, so I make work much quicker now than I did before. I make less paintings of people's faces. Um, you paint just the people you like. I mean, if you talk, and then you said that sometimes someone will say something abusive. Do you click next, or do you continue the conversation just to see, like, how they will react to something else that you will say? Um, I would continue to make the painting because I feel like the painting kind of in a way protects me in that situation. It's like somebody could say something but it's happening through me rather than to me because the painting is the document of that experience. Um, and in my head, I'm wrong. Maybe this is like um, an illusion, but I always win because I <coughs> made the painting and they didn't do anything.
You were mentioning at the beginning of the conversation uh, the problem of the visibility or let's say um, the problem of the market prices in between male and female artists. Uh, is it about uh, England, UK or you got some other experiences as a worldwide problem? Uh, how do you see that? And, and, and uh, what kind of differences are we talking about? If we talk about, let's say, superstars like, I don't know, Tracy Emin or Chilean Waring or um, these girls from my generation, they sure have, uh, let's say, cosmic prices. Yeah, but if you compare, to, yeah. like for like with their male counterparts, the men, the men would be generally higher. Okay. Then in the first, for example. Yeah. <laughs> it's worldwide, I would say. I don't work for an auction house, and I don't work for a gallery, and so I don't know the details. But from my experience and what I've read, I think it's still very kind of colossal. <coughs> Imbalanced. Colossal imbalance, that, that's what you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example like, to, to understand it? Should we do Google search? <laughs> oh, yeah, Google, yeah. I, I think it's like 10 times difference. 10 times? Yes. Yeah. For a work of female artists and male artists, something like that. Yeah. It, can, it can get up to 10. So 10 uh, well, then come to Serbia. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that problem. <laughs> I did not They're all badly paid. I just wanted to ask, uh, I don't know if anybody else has more questions, or we can come. I just want to ask one quick okay. practice experience <coughs> of talking to men dominantly in, in chat rooms change your perception of men in general, you know, in positive or negative way? Did it confirm your, you know, view on men as, you know, or, or not? As. As. <laughs> <laughs> everybody has different yeah. opinion about men in general, but, yeah, I, I was just wondering what the case in what your the conclusion to the research. <laughs> um, I just think it's so complex, actually, and there's not a single um, deduction that can be made, actually. And also, I'm not just painting them, I'm experiencing my own gender kind of fluidity within making that work um, <coughs> and experiencing what it is to become or view a lot of sexual imagery which can make you feel different. I think that the experience is transformative and makes one to reflect on one's own um, sexuality and one's own perception of one's gender. Um, so it's as much about me as it is about them. Did, did this sensitize you in your own intimacy? I mean, maybe this question is too intimate, but uh, because it's a type of pornography and pornography generally, generally desensitizes people towards intimacy. So do you find it like, have you gotten any, uh, you know, disgust towards, because of what you see, towards sex in general, or do you, you separate yourself from I mean, how do you shake off the influence of looking at all those perks? Uh, mm. I think it's like quite a masochistic thing to do. Um, but I think sex has a masochistic element to it, personally. And I think it probably doesn't have a negative effect on me. If anything, maybe a positive effect on me. <laughs> I don't think it's bad or shameful. I I think um She doesn't have any negative feelings towards what they're doing or what you're looking at. It's just
something you're observing? You, you're no, actually there are definitely experiences which are upsetting to me. And that make that day make me feel sad and uncomfortable. And another, another day I might have a very uplifting experience, a life-affirming experience, mm-hmm. um, which may be not even sexual at all. So, and also I don't make just that series, I make lots of different types of paintings. That's no, so um, switch from... Yeah, I don't make them every day, for hours and hours. So, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> to conclude maybe then, <laughs> yeah. um, I just, uh, when I was uh, reading a little bit about uh, your artworks and I uh, find out that someone asked you, and I also wanted to ask this question because it's a kind of a part of this exhibition, do you find, do you consider yourself as a feminist artist in this feminist sense of art and everything? I mean, yeah, <coughs> but I think every artist is a, f- the, every young artist is probably a feminist, feminist artist that I know of. Maybe there are a few that aren't, but feminist as in <coughs> the way that everybody should be. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, yeah, it's the short answer. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you.